Thank you. It's wonderful to see everybody here, and I think we're in for a real treat. I'm very pleased to be able to introduce a very good friend of mine, and from the the reception that he got from a lot of people coming in, he's a very good friend of an awful lot of people here in the auditorium tonight. Mahmoud Koder, as you know, is here visiting us from Cairo and is, is going to be giving a lecture on new discoveries at Abu Sir. Mahmoud is has been a friend for 15 years, right? Uh, longer than probably either one of us want to admit. Uh, he is one of, if not the best guide in Egypt that I know. He's an Egyptologist. Uh, I know a lot of guides in Egypt and a lot of Egyptologists in Egypt, and he's the one that when I go to Egypt, I try to work with him in seeing places that I've never seen because he knows the people and then knows the places that I don't. Mahmoud has, is an uh, Egyptologist and archaeologist. As I say, he has degrees from Al-Azhar University in Cairo, which is, you know, the, the oldest university in the world. He has a graduate degree in Egyptology and archaeology from Cairo University. Uh, just as sort of an aside, some of you know that I work in Egypt with the University of Arizona Egyptian Expedition, and when we leave after our field season, we have to give a report to the Supreme Council for Antiquities, the SEA. <clears throat> we have to give it not only in, in English, but also Arabic. And Mahmoud is the person we turn to to translate our reports from English into Arabic because he is such a good Egyptologist, he is such a good archaeologist, that we know he's not going to make a mistake and he understands all of the, the terminology we have to use. So I am very pleased to introduce Mahmoud Koder, and would you please give him a warm Denver welcome. Okay, thank you everybody, and uh, before I start, I would like to say I would like to do thank everyone and each of you for um, sparing the time to come over and to listen to somebody you haven't heard his name before, and I hope that uh, you will find it worth it to come and see this part. Um, simply a year ago, I was here in Denver uh, giving a talk to a group of my friends, and uh, we had a chat about this lecture about this place, and um, it came to the the fact it is really a real thing, and we I'm here, I made it. It was uh, an interesting flight. Most of you did it before. Uh, when I thought about it, I know that uh, most of the members here, they have been to Egypt several times. They have seen a great deal of Egypt, and uh, it was uh, really not easy to pick up the subject. Uh, to catch everybody's interest. So one of the places that hardly people as a normal tourist will get to that place is Abu Sir. And we'll know where is Abu Sir you know, in a few minutes. However, those who went to Abu Sir, um, maybe once or twice, they will never be able to catch what's the place look like and how big it is, actually. The problem is it's one of the what we call not that famous place in Egypt, like the plateau of Giza, where is the Great Pyramid, like Saqqara, like Dahshur. It's just like on the side a little bit. That's why even the big teams who are doing digging, uh, they've been digging in Egypt, that's not on their highlight of the spots. However, the Czech team from Czechoslovakia have been working for years over there, and I think they've been doing a marvelous job for those who has been, and every day for them in work, there's some new marvels coming. Um, main theme of the talk today is I'm going to take you on a journey uh, of a discovery of a tomb. Um, we always, wow, it's a great discovery. We hear about it in the news and we saw a couple of the pictures. And uh, the big head speakers of Egypt will come and then take the picture with the last minute thing. You don't know how much it took them to find this place. So normally to find a tomb out of a hidden place, at least you are looking at about two, two years of work. So unfortunately, we don't have that time with you in this theater. I mean, we, we cannot afford it. So uh, we'll try to make it as an easy trip uh, through the digs 
together and then at the end there'll be flashing of some new little highlights of what's going on today in Egypt which is maybe not yet on the news because they're still working on um, as a as a site of uh, Abu Sir uh, you know the site really we have to go back to the old kingdom and specifically uh, we're going to focus on the peak or the top of Ra or Re power uh, and influence in the old kingdom that's the top of it in the in the fifth dynasty where we're going to see uh, most of their pyramids are there and by the way when we talk about number of pyramids there I mean you are looking at uh, not uh, three that everybody can see them from a distance from Saqqara you are looking at more than what you can expect even Lepsius already has numbered up to 29 pyramids already in that area so uh, we'll try together to look around and to see what we can enjoy today out of our story uh, for the friends who um, their trips to Egypt only to the main major places of course uh, Egypt is as you can see over there and uh, simply I am really like to focus on the Nile all the time and our site is going to be here you see the three the two dots called Giza and Saqqara it's in the middle between Giza and Saqqara exactly that's where is the place that's our topic is going to be the Nile as I said always is just one of the major factors that uh, helped to create the civilization for this country without the Nile I think Egypt will be having a hard time as you can see there is no much of potentials to create life the Nile is the, the reason behind the stability of the country so everybody stayed there near the river they can manage to build and to create you know residential area houses buildings so and so and so so um, for me always when I look at the map of Egypt I always say Egypt is a beautiful lotus flower it's the Nile if you look at it has a beautiful reed and end up by a beautiful flower on top and that's life of the Egyptian around this flower so well uh, you know the new technology made some fun so I try to use it so <laughs> you know you know I learned from my daughter as most of us learn from our kids how to play with the computers so uh, our site today is here that's Abu Sir and those are actually even this map really as you can see not an up-to-date maps but uh, the Abu Sir as you can see that will be the water line and here we have the pyramids there with their complexes of the valley temples and all the way down here as I said before if you look at the numbers of Lipsius see that's what I'm talking about there are quite a number of them around on this place if actually we look at this part there is uh, uh, Nefer Irikara which is this one here the latest one pyramid they really know knows about it and they found the name is Neferif Ra or Ra Neferif whatever the way you'd like to read it it's okay because they didn't find that much of it but the only evidence we found the name of this king already over there um, it was interesting it was just a quarry mark in on a stone it was covered it was under the casing stone when they were clearing the place the casing stone the casing casing stone was not actually in a good shape when they tried to move it and put it in the right place they found the cartouche in the red ink we know that the red ink is the quarry mark so it taught us something that every stone coming from the quarry has to have the name of the person going to know which direction it's going to not to be taken by another person halfway actually our story is we go continue in the desert in that direction for almost maybe three quarters of a mile and that's where is the discovery that took place our tomb is totally finished okay being found and when everybody some of the people know about it and so a couple of pictures or so on the media then actually the next season they came up with another tomb and this season already they have found the pit of the third one so uh, which is if you continue three miles away from that distance the same direction as I say always the same direction further that way I mean you will find that our friend the Japanese team is working already next door to them and they have found a couple of tombs within the last four years so this is an area far away and remote from people to reach 
I mean, even the tourists, when they come to Abu Sir, uh, mostly because they have a permission to go there, special arrangements to get you there. So mostly you focus around the area of Sahura, Niwisara, Nifirkara, and all these kind of pyramids. But you cannot go further that far. You know, that's usual when sometimes, too, you know, the oldest story, most of things found in Egypt by donkeys and animals and horses. and uh, But that's the way always we see in the desert, the people walking in the desert, you know, the ladies carrying the pot for to get some water, that's where they work. And maybe uh, some tourists will come and see, and they look at a hole like this, dig what's in this place, I mean. So they see a hole and then they go, nothing there. But archaeologists, their work is different. When they come, they will start really their work. They divide the section into squares and they start digging inside that place. You look at the size of the hole now. It's not like the one that we saw before. It's getting bigger because they have seen already some really interesting mud brick wall around. And having mud brick so close to the surface of the sand, that's really a red line, a red light for every archaeologist. In the middle of the desert, you have mud brick. You are standing on top of something. The, um, so quickly, we'll wrap up the work and get the workers to dig. And we can see now how much now. There's a lot of sand. You have to take it out. And uh, you cannot get that much of uh, machineries and uh, modern equipments and the work because you don't know, you know how deep you're going to go. And maybe it's those big tractors or loaders or whatever, they may damage what you are expecting to see uh, at the end of your day. The work will take them, actually, as you can see, we've been now working for five minutes, but uh, this is so far, you know, four months of work. You know, in the fifth month, uh, okay, we start to see some little constructions there, as you can see, those nice, beautiful arches in this place, we can see them here. And we can see the depth now. We are looking, the picture being taken from the surface, and we are looking down to see what's up there. So uh, once this thing showed up here, I think uh, we are more definite now. We are coming up to see something interesting on the way. It's a bit close, as you can see. So we'll try to clear up and to go inside. Once we get inside that place, I'm trying to show you before we go inside how deep we are, you know, and all this is cut, as you can see, in the rock. So uh, this is so far, you know, we almost finished the fifth month in the work. And remember, the season is almost over. So they left it for the next season to work. That's they couldn't do that because there's no have much, you know, you know, you know, teams, Dick, Harwood. They have a budget, they have to finish the budget and time to go, otherwise they'll be, you know, they have to leave for other work. Um, with the beginning of the next season, they get inside those vaulted arches, you saw them before, and they found that little shaft and we have that hole, you can see it down here at the bottom. And we found an interesting, that stone, and we found a layer of dust, thin layer of dust, and, uh, oops. Same dummy thing I made all the time. Okay. As I told you, me and technology, we don't get together. We found on this place, we found a mummy. I think I can, you can see the head. Okay. Or there, that's the mummy in that little dust. And we have dust already on top of the mummy and underneath the mummy, a very thin layer of dust, which is really, that's part of the ancient Egyptian rituals already. There would be a thin layer of dust already around the mummy in what we are looking at, especially you are looking at the late period of time in the history. And the tomb actually, as we will know later on, it's a 26th dynasty tomb. So we're looking late. And of course, that will go with what we believe in from dust to dust. So that's why they put this around that. Finally, after we crossed this part, we came to the gate, ah, the door, the sealed door of the tomb. And that was really a moment that everybody couldn't believe themselves. We are in front of a door, a sealed door, never been broken before. The name of the person is there and everything sealed, nothing cracked at all in that place. So that promise us of 
untouched tomb, never been looted, never been taken by somebody before us. You know, not everything will go well with you. You know, you try to work, you try to shelter from the sun, and you can see they were working, the sun is coming through the shaft, and uh, we had to put what we call it a wooden shelter for the people to work while they are doing their work during the day. And unfortunately, it was not strong enough, and some of the stone came from top. It was a mess, actually, to see what happened. And unfortunately, they have lost one of the workers during this. And few injuries, of course. And that's why they have to suspend the work in the tomb for at least, you know, three weeks until the workers can handle to come back to the same place where they lost their friend. So the only solution that the team decided, we're going to build a concrete shelter for the place to protect us from the falling stones from top. When we get inside that fall there, so we opened the door of the tomb, and it was amazing. You see, it's a one, see the arched ceiling of the tomb made out of beautiful fine limestone, one piece, all together. And you can see here, he is sitting on what? He is sitting on top of the sarcophagus. The tomb, as you can see, is very tight compared to all that depth we went through. And around that case, there is a very tiny space, hardly you're going to walk around, but never been left empty. When we got there around and start to work, we found the boxes that has the Wushaptis statues. I'm looking at a complete intact tomb. So everything has to be there in its place. So the Ushaptis, as you can see, they're really unbelievably great. I mean, it was in a great condition. I mean, you can't believe yourself when you're looking at them and holding them in your hands. It's quite spectacular. Actually, when you get more details of, the, of him as a vizier, So uh, what else we can find beside this one? We found a complete set of papyrus scrolls already were there in the tomb next door to this. In that place, nothing there been lost. However, the papyrus was not in a very good condition, but actually it was really a, a nice thing to see a, you know, a scroll of papyrus intact in its tomb. What else as well? As you can see now, we opened the case and it's a very gloomy picture. I, I tried to get the best of it. Sorry, I can't. As you can see, I don't know, I need you to focus a little bit. And, and uh, you know, my, my glasses can see exactly the thing. If you would like to borrow my glasses. I <laughs> see, um, I'm trying to tell you there is, a sargo there is a scarab here. You see it? That's the bottom of the scarab and the two legs. And you see this part? That's the beard of the sarcophagus. It's the beard. I know it's quite difficult. Let's uh, clean it quickly. See, it's something, you know, you couldn't believe there is under the, all this dirt and the mortar and everything, there is something hidden like that. So um, as you can see, for us and for the people who are working in a tomb, it's a festival, I mean, to find something like that. And th those are always two brothers. You're right, those two brothers, they are very famous ones. They are the best who can open any sarcophagus in the tightest, tiniest place you can ever imagine in your life. And all the Egyptian antiquity people, whenever they have a discovery of a tomb and have a tight room and a sarcophagus in there, and they want to open, open it without any destruction, they need to call them. Uh, you know, I've seen them working in, you know, while you cannot really even walk but they can go and open the case and without destroying anything inside. Actually, I couldn't get over the beauty of this and the details, and it's granite, by the way, and you can imagine you have to take it all the way in the shaft, remember? Don't forget that we are far away 
from the surface all the way down and to do all the work around it. What else when we, so we examined the mummy and we had a professor already came at that time, specialized in this work. And uh, we give we gave us some inf, you know indication when we make a scan for the mummy. We found that it almost died when he was about 40 something years old. And he didn't do hard labor because his backbone was perfect. You know, his skeleton was nothing wrong with it. No compression, nothing and it was damaged or broken and fixed before. Actually, the mummy, uh, once we start to touch the wooden case, unfortunately, it would turn into powder, dust. The wood was actually disintegrating. Uh, but even the bead, you know, the beaded cover on top of every mummy was there, but uh, it, we have to collect it one by one because, you know, the connecting layer line or the thread was just disintegrated at the same time. Uh, what was surprised us and told us he was really a good uh, rich man, we found that uh, he has a gold nails cover, which is hard, you know, some of us, maybe this is the first time to hear something about it. We found a gold nail cover. I know that King Tut has everything, you know, was gold, but uh, that's something else. Uh, one other thing is uh, we found uh, just a, a penis sheet made out of gold as well. It sounds that he was a very rich man, so he has enough gold to do everything. We took the mummy, we took the lid away, and we tried to enjoy and feast our eyes with the details of the beautiful sarcophagus from inside. Even those beautiful, interesting figures of the gods and deities that confuses all of us when you study ancient Egyptian. You think that you study gods and goddesses, wait until you come to the 26th dynasty and you feel you are lost. You have names which is really, uh, you know, we have some really very funny names. We have one of them is called Tutu, T-U-T-U. -T -U. I mean, which is something, you know, we saw it when we look at it inside. I mean, if we couldn't, you know, what this God is doing, I mean. So uh, that was inside the case in the, you know, as you can see, the granite case of this man. Of course, attributes I have, we have to give attributes to those who has worked for those two years. I mean, uh, it didn't take us that much. We almost uh, 25 minutes of work, uh, took us two years in the work. Of course, uh, mm -hmm. Professor Werner is the one on the left here in front of the glasses and the team as well with him. But they, you know, this is the man behind a lot of work in Abu Sir. I would say that, you know, he's the one what Abu Sir today is having. Um, so uh, that's them and Quickly, once you finish the tomb, they started another one. You see, they get used to the tune, to the work, and everything is working, as you can see there. So they learn the lesson. So they're not going to start working without supporting the walls because they have lost another one. They work it all the way for almost six months in the next one, and they found another door like the one we saw it before. So... Uh, that's a story need to be completed. It's not completed yet in their actual life because they are working on it and they're going to finish it next year. They already has finished, stopped this season by the gate and they are working to continue for the next year for this part. When we talk about Abu Sir and all these places, you know, I couldn't help myself, you know. When you think about Abu Sir, we give name to these places, but Abu Sir and Saqqara and Giza and Abu Rawash, for those who has been to all these places, all the way to the, to Elisht, that's the necropolis of Memphis. That's one necropolis. It was used in several places according to the time. You know, every time they were moving from one point to the other, so they start putting their necropolis somewhere else. Uh, this is the work, uh, you know, that wall here in this place, that's not far away from the step pyramid, by the way. So uh, those people, they are digging, as you can see, there's quite a crowd of tomb dig uh, people digging and working with this team. That is not the Czech team from Czechoslovakia. That's a Dutch team. They have actually, those people, they work it in a season, and they have already found the tomb in this area, and they are, you know, protected it with this enclosure, mud brick wall in that place, and they stopped at that part. 
The next season, they wanted to continue because the tomb is not finished yet at that place. So, uh, as you can see, after a few weeks, look, we are not far from the step pyramid. What happened under the sand, not far away, the white wall showed up. We are not the 26th dynasty here in this area. We are looking at new kingdom work. And specifically, uh, let me show you, and I think you will quickly will pick up what period of the new kingdom we are looking at. Let's come closer to the wall and try to enjoy what's on the walls. As you can see, the beautiful details and some colors still there. And I think from the details of the body, I think we are looking at 18th dynasty and we're not far from Akhenaten's time. I think we are a little bit, if not his time, we are just behind him yeah, after he left. Because I can think the artist's clear. It's really have a lot to do with the Aten school of art, we call it. For a prince, as you can see him and the same traditional way of people, um, you know, asking after they have given offerings. While, see, they are leading more offering to him. Beautiful. I mean, the place is quite spectacular. When you think under this sand, it's quite interesting. When you look at the details of the figure of the people and the animals there, so that really confirms what we are looking at. We are looking at 18th dynasty, new kingdom, and maybe post Akhenaten's time, or maybe his time. You see, this is interesting. You look at the man sitting, see the chair, the legs. That's the man legs, and that's the chair there. And there is something going there inside, under the chair. That really ca caught my eyes. I mean, you know, I always like, I mean, some of the people they were with me before in trips, you know, what really catches my eyes is the little details on the wall, not the big stuff. So I have to focus a little bit. It will take you a while to try to catch what's going on. There are two monkeys that are eating something. Well, you know, I try to figure out what's this. I mean, uh, even we had a fight with the, uh, not a fight, and argue. Uh, some people said it's fig. I said no figs because figs never come like this as a group. Dates, I think the monkey hands quite smaller than the date. So I'm going to leave it up to you. One of the things I do like the most here, if you look at the monkey at the bottom, you see him hanging, trying to catch something by his right hand side. Did you see his tail? That's his tail. And it sounds that the owner of the tomb doesn't want them to leave the place. So he tied them with ropes to the leg. See, that's the rope. That's the tail. That's the tail. That's the rope. So he's tying them up so they cannot leave the place. Uh, did anybody came up with what's the what what they are eating? Because the because Bell here asked me there was a there would be a test after the lecture. I said yes, there will be a test, oral test, and the one who will answer the question will leave the room. <laughs> um, I don't know how far you are we're out of Egypt, but uh, we are doing a big work at the moment of trying to restore and. Uh, you know, support the step pyramid. A big, big project. I mean, there's an Egyptian company is taking care of that and they're doing a very good job. They finished almost one side, which is the southern side, and they're already now working on the eastern side. And they have started to do some work in the northern side, which is, that's the main entrance of the step pyramid. I know some of you has a privilege to go inside the, the step pyramid, but from the southern gate, not from the northern gate. The southern gate is uh, the one that's 26th dynasty. It's easy, nice, easy walk. You go in there and you look down the pit and you find a big, you know, space of dirt and stones and crumbled wooden pieces down. Um, the team was working and in the north side of the pyramid, by the way, uh, they have 
discovered when they are cleaning the place they have discovered i i want to read really, most of you to imagine what i'm talking about you're making your way inside the step pyramid from the north side go inside the step pyramid from the actual gate 20 feet after you pass the gate they found by accident they never you know plan to do it when they clean the place they found an exit or an entrance sorry an entrance from that part and when he got to that entrance it took them straight shortcut to the top of the barrel chamber and that was not listed before nobody knew anything about it it was not on the maps we know that the pyramids of the everybody know quite well that the step pyramid uh, has almost passages we are looking at maybe between three to four miles long down it's like a maze but that one really was a shortcut It will not going to take you more than three minutes walk from the gate to the top of the barrel chamber. They have managed to clean all the dirt and the stones you can see from that room for some of you who has been inside. And that's what you can see now. We are standing on top of the barrel chamber and we found those slabs. The slabs, as you can see, we found them, and then we found two big blocks sticking out in the middle. I mean, actually, those are like the lock stones. I mean, you cannot move any one of the slabs un until you really you take one of them out. So you can really maneuver and move because the size of the room will not going to let you really slide them to the sides. The amazing thing about that, we tried to send someone, you know, our Egyptians, when they always... You know, it's very tight. We tried to send someone, as you can see, he couldn't go through. He's stuck, so we got him out again. The amazing thing is we found there are some writings, carvings on those slabs of the stones. We tried to really focus more to see what they are. That's the, the maximum we can do about it. And we found out those are actually some of the symbols and they are numbering the blocks, codes. Block number four, block number five, block number six. They're giving numbers for the blocks. And I think it's like a jigsaw puzzle thing. You know, when you really take this lock one in the center, the first one you have to move is you have to find out where is block number one to get it as, you know, in and to move this so you can be open to open the, you know, the ceiling of the barrel chamber. So we are on top of the barrel chamber, we are not inside. The other passages can get you inside the barrel chamber, which is, I don't know how many of you in this room has been inside. It's a trip, once in your life you do it. You go inside the barrel chamber of Djoser and you have to say two prayers that will help you to get out again. We're doing well so far. One of the latest things I want to just like flash it to you and show you what it is there. Uh, you know, most of you has been passed by the step pyramid and the titi pyramid and all this. There was like a, a little small cone of stones. And whenever you go by, everybody will tell you this is Userkaf pyramid. But have you ever been inside Userkaf pyramid? However, you know, how much you can see inside from all the stones and the bricks that dump all over the place. So recently they have started, you know, almost a year ago or so, they have started a project of cleaning Oser Kaf and, you know, putting some lights inside. And so I don't know what they are going to do with it. I'm sure they're not going to open for public. But uh, this is the gate. It was being closed, as you can see. That's the way it should be all the time. But when they started their work, they start to open the place and put the ladders and the work in that part. So they cleaned the passage, as you can see. Now we are going heading into Usr Kaf. The passage, we're not going to go straight. The passage has a right turn angle to the left. Go straight and then go left. In this place. And once you go there, he will drop you off into a big chamber, which is supposed to be the barrel chamber in the place. And unfortunately, we have lost a big deal of the floor as a stones the sarcophagus and that's part of the sarcophagus not the whole thing not much there actually there's no one single graffiti sorry there's no one single hieroglyphics there i mean it sounded that the place was really was left unfinished and they haven't done that much with it however we have found already some little uh, you know graffiti of the people who has visited the place they left their names 
here and there, we could really track and grab two of them out of the whole place. The ceiling is quite spectacular, as you can see out of this point. The same idea of the slabs supporting each other, like most of the pyramids of the end of the 5th dynasty and the beginning of the 6th dynasty, that's the same style all the way there. That's to try to support their place. So uh, Osir Kaf now is clean, tidy, and uh, but it's not open yet formally for the people for people to go and see this place. I was told to, to keep up timing and then to have a spare of time, maybe we have some questions, but there was no answer for what the two monkeys are eating. At, um, I hope I was not that really that uh, hard person on you to try to give you a little bit of this and a little bit of dust, take you in a dusty trip <laughs> without getting your shoes dusted to make sure that uh, uh, I have really uh, showed you something maybe of an interest to some of you. I learned something new, as you can see, that uh, we still have many things going on in Egypt. That's not the end of the story. This is some of them really happened a year and a two, year, a two years, and some of them just showed up only three weeks ago of work. I really do thank you as well for your time, for coming all the way to here, spending your time and taking that part. Thank you very much for the time and listening. Um, they are not replacing, sto they are, you know, filling up the gaps after the erosion, you know, there is a, the problem of the step pyramid mostly in the first two steps. And the worst one of them is the first one at the bottom. It's keep, keep eroding. And then actually, actually there is one point they are really way deep. And then the second one is way out. So that's why they are trying at the moment to fill up these places and to try to support what is there. They are using stones from outside. There's a whole workshop of stones outside near the step pyramid of a team working there. But the good thing about it, they are not using the cement. They're using a specific type of material that really that the stone will not gonna reject or kick it out again. I mean, they are not doing the same like our Italian friend in the old days, Barazenti, if you remember him. Yeah, because Egyptian, we call him in archaeology Parasementi <laughs> because he has used enough cement in restoring the sites and the pyramids. So, uh, so actually they are f you know, filling up the first two courses mostly of the missing parts. Yes? Uh, can you repeat the questions, please? Uh, uh, sorry, the question is how much they have done in translating and sphering what was in the sarcophagus of the tomb they have found? Well, most of what they are done so far, as far as we have already, they have already has translated a big deal of that one. You know, remember one thing, um, you, don't, you need some specific or certain people. We don't have that many of them in the world. They are specialized in this period. So as much as they can do, you know, Werner and his team, they did a good job of, you know, giving a lot of translation for that. And there's, I think, um, I don't know if he did a, there was a, I don't know, the, the publication of this tomb showed up already on the market or not yet. I didn't follow that much because even Werner disappeared for a while from, he was not the head of the team anymore for the institute, but he's working after that. But actually, they did some translation. But as I said before, we were really trapped with some of the names of those gods. It was really funny when you see, you know, it's simple. The name is four letters. <laughs> it was T-U-T-U. -U. Or T-O-T-O, -T -O, whatever the way you want to put it. It's the same thing. The questions? Yes? I was thinking the same uh, sarcophagus where you have a shepherd beetle with apparently the head of the, of the wild hare. 
Yeah, no, that's one of the things I, I meant it to show you, to, show, to, to, to tell you how really... Well, you know, I have quite a number of pictures of the sarcophagus, just but I picked up some of these, which is really that's one of them is uh, is my favorite, but it's still the most awkward thing. I mean, the combination of a, a beetle with a human head with a rabbit ears. <laughs> well, it's it's the same like the fruit they are eating. Yes. When they're excavating and they have all this dirty debris, do they just dump it next door? Yes, that's when the, the question when they are excavating all the dirt and the debris, where they are putting it, they are dumping next door. Yeah, that's the same thing because the team will come next after you to work. He will take all that debris, dump it next next door and dig up his own place and you know, it's, this, is, this, is, this is the way, all the time. You know, that's all the way. Send, bring, and vase, and petri, and all. It's the same thing. It's a matter of, uh, you know, I'm doing the work here. It's okay. <laughs> and were those mangoes by any chance? The mangoes yeah, but, the, you know, remember, mango doesn't come like a grape thing. Do you want me to show you the picture again? <laughs> I, I, I can pull it up anyhow, yes, just to keep looking at what is there. <laughs> They're eating something. It's just, this is the problem we have. Yes? With the global economy kind of dicey right now, what are the prospects for continuing um, digging in the next few years? Um, for the Egyptian teams, we're fine. I mean, I don't know. The government really, uh, they, they, I don't know how they get the money, but they do get. They are working everywhere. I mean, the Egyptian teams are working. Uh, for the foreign missions, which is, this is really, uh, I'm not that much aware of. But so far, as I can see, most of the foreign missions schedule and timing, the, the table for the work is still active. I mean, uh, some of the American teams are coming the next season, normally in their schedule. They might have shorter time in a season. Maybe, I don't know. This is because they don't have enough time to work or budget-wise. But, um, you know, there is something um, I would say. You know, the problem is not the money. The problem is, can you get rid of Egypt out of your system? That's the point. <laughs> it's an incurable bug. Yes. <laughs> Uh, the papyrus that found in that tomb, was that a uh, book of the dead, or can we hope for anything more exciting? Well, Bill, it was not translated. There is one thing we have to say. It could be, and it could be not. But as far as we know, that papyrus, you know, that's not New Kingdom. If it's New Kingdom, I would say not the book of the dead. The, because as you know, it's quite well that book of the dead only in the Valley of the Kings. There is a replacement of the Book of the Dead in the Valley of the Queens, but not exactly with the same name. But nobles do not have Book of the Dead in their place. That's way late. 26th Dynasty, I cannot say. They could be, they could be not. But that beautiful scroll, that papyrus block you saw, um, nobody can ever touch it. It's just like very fragile. They took it, and I don't know what happened to it after that. We had the picture. Yes? The sarcophagus, obviously they're not going to leave it there because it will walk away. Do you know where it's gone? The sarcophagus, they're not going to leave it there. Actually, the sarcophagus, you cannot take it out. Right, but I mean, is it in... It's in its place. Oh, it is in it. The sarcophagus is there. The mummy left to Giza lab. And this, you know, we don't know anything about it after that. This, you know, this, you know, the, the door to go inside that, you, you see them in the picture we had with the arch place. The door to this place is only for one person to go in. The sarcophagus you are looking at here, we are looking at between 15 to 20 tons. 
And if somebody would like to take it, you know, I think, you know, he will need a few days. <laughs> Remember the shaft? We, were, we are way down in the shaft now. That's, that's, so that's the safest place for the sarcophagus, I believe. <laughs> no, it's too, I think that's an excess baggage. They're going to charge you $20 for it, if you want to. Yes. <laughs> yes. We know Egypt has been pioneering. We know ancient Egypt created a number of things. Maybe this was the first example of GMO, you know, genetic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I need to look at it. <laughs> I need to look at it. Other questions? Yes, Jeff. Uh, what are the prospects of aligning old kingdoms, mummies, in this area? Finding mummies of old kingdom, I would say, of course, there is a possibility, simply. I mean, you have already the big tomb of Betah uh, Shepsis, next door to Sahuri. There, you know, I mean, that's a cemetery originally, old kingdom, with all the pyramids around. And we know quite well that there's no one pyramid will be alone in the middle of where. The king will have all his guys around, you know. Saqqara is an example. The Giza pyramid is an example. So it's somewhere. But, you know, as, he, as uh, one of our friends said about dumping the dirt, you know, your work from one place to the other, they, they should be somewhere. There could be a possibility of a tomb. For, but actually, they are busy now of what they are found. Because it's easy. I mean, you know, uh, there are so far three tombs in line. There's only you know, 50 feet apart from one, away from the other. And a whole cliff and a mountain, you can see it if you are in Saqqara, you can see it, it's quite clear, a straight line of a mountain, and like a wadi of sand, so the whole line of that mountain, it's simply, it will be tombs. But so far, they are going with the, this one. But remember one thing, Jeff, as well, at the end of that mountain line there, you know, there is a new kingdom, Kha'am West that the Japanese has found many years ago. So, Do you think Imhotep is buried in Saqqara? I, do I think Imhotep is buried in Saqqara? You know, we always believe you don't know what's the sand we'll show you tomorrow. You know, there is a great possibility where it could be. I mean, you know, that's his place. But, you know, the Dutch, you know, not the Dutch, sorry, excuse my English. The Polish team, remember they were working on the western side of the enclosure wall of the step pyramid. They already so far three tombs coming up with. They found one recently, but you will hear about it soon. But, you know, they, the first one they found, that's they claim, oh, we're almost about to get Imhotep, but it was not. So, uh, what I believe as well, the whole enclosure of Djoser need to be dug up carefully. The whole enclosure of Joseph from outside need to be dug up. There is still. Um, they have already Bitahotob of Saqqara. They already found a new tomb behind it. I don't know if you heard about that or not. Yes, this is not published this. Maybe they are keeping it for next month or so. They found one already behind Bitahotob. And there was a discovery near Gisr and Mujir, if, you, if this hits some of your something in Saqqara as well. well I'm, I'm talking about like, you know, you've been to Egypt several times, you, th you think you saw everything, but as I said before, the sand will always show you something tomorrow. That's what keeps archaeologists putting their, you know, nails in the sand all the time, because every day I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. Question? Ah, yes. It was perfect. It was perfect. The, remember I showed the door and I stopped? It's perfect. N never been touched. The, he said, uh, the question is, the second tomb, the check is working, but I stopped them by the door. The door was, see, the seal was perfect or never been broken or broken. I said, no, the seal was perfect. Sealed, nothing there. But we didn't find the actual other burial on top of it. Remember, the first one has a burial 
place above it, which is that's a later time they have reused the place and put some mummies there. But that one, no, there was no other usage of the area. Yes, question. Are there any funeral uh, implements along with the sarcophagus? Uh, unfortunately, not. Uh, the question, are there any funeral you know, items with around the sarcophagus? Unfortunately, the, we found the, uh, bo the boxes that has the uh, Ushaptis, the papyrus scrolls. You know, I would assume there's no much because simply, did you see the size of the tomb? And the size of the sarcophagus is... <laughs> yes? So do you think that the, the sarcophagus was somehow built inside the tomb in order to... No, it's granite. The, uh, the, the sarcophagus was built inside the tomb, the sarcophagus is granite. The sarcophagus was granite and being um, put inside the, a rock cut limestone. I don't know if, you're, if you saw that or not. There is a limestone and the granite inside. <laughs> How they get? How they get the sarcophagus in there? Yeah, that's simple. <laughs> if they can get it from Aswan. <laughs> Remember that the dome, the do you know that that uh, in that um, dome ceiling, that was made after. So it was the shaft. The game is to drop that piece down. Yeah. They need a lot of sand for this work. For the sand, yes. yes. Question. There was a question here. Yes. Yeah, there are lots of carving on it. Yes. Uh, some being translated, which is regular, you know, hymns and spells, like the usual thing. Some really we stuck with it, you know. We, you know, I didn't, you know, I would have really uh, put some more of those writings. It's very interesting, but I didn't want to really um, let you feel trapped because there are some really of those kind of rabbits' heads and too many of these things. <laughs> there are too many of these things here in the tomb, actually. Besides, you know, we have the, the usual deities like Tawarit is there, Sekhemet is there. Uh, you know, we saw them already there. Those are something simple. Yes? As a biologist, small monkeys, large dates. <laughs> oh, small monkeys loves dates, okay. Well, that looks more logic. <laughs> But those, those are small monkeys, right? Yeah, if they can sit under the seat. Okay. One is going to leave the room. <laughs> yes? It looks to me like they're cutting a hole in whatever the fruit is and drinking from it. If you see what's in You think we are just, but we don't grow, we do not grow coconuts. <laughs> Well, you know, it took, a, you know, we argued in, in the site for, a t for two hours. And we had like about five cups of tea at that time. So I said, so we argued for a while in the site, actually. <laughs> yeah. Ah, I like to leave it there to you, up to you. Other questions? Yes, one more. Uh, yeah, papyrus scroll, we had a question here, the same thing. Uh, papyrus scroll conditions was not that good. It was terribly bad. I mean, they hardly put them on that little piece of, uh, you know, cloth that we took pictures of it, and then they put it aside. They couldn't really keep it. Uh, Yes, one more question. Um, there's a, at the bottom of that picture, there, there's something that looks, looks as though it's some sort of container and you're looking hand on it, perhaps the same kind of thing. No, uh, at the bottom there are two figs by the foot of the monkey, which is that's really, they look different than the one there. Um, do you see them or not? Do you, see this? You mean the, the basket? Yeah, that's a basket. That's what it is. could be dates. <laughs> you 
know, we had some hard time. I mean, I have to say the truth. Uh, when we are in a site, when we're looking at them uh, with my friends together, uh, you know, always archaeologists will never agree on one thing. <laughs> we will never agree on one thing. Never. Yes. Well, I was just wondering, do you have any idea when bananas were introduced in <laughs> No, no, the bananas is much later in time. That's way late. Bananas like camels <laughs> came much later to Egypt. <laughs> <laughs>